very much for those words of welcome. Fantastic to be with you here in Birmingham. Congratulations to all of you who took our message through the streets of the city. And isn't it fantastic to be together on this historic day when millions of people across our country are taking action in their battle for justice and fairness. And this is an unprecedented day. 30 unions have members taking action together. And we're sending a crystal clear message to the government, aren't we? That we're strong, that we're united, and that our campaign will go on until justice and fairness is delivered for every public servant. People never take industrial action lightly. Nobody wants to forsake a day's pay when the cost of living is so high. Nobody wants to inconvenience the public and other working families. But when unfairness is piled on injustice, you are right to take a stand. And I'm proud to stand with every one of you. keep saying that all they want is to secure the long-term affordability of public service pensions. Well, that sounds reasonable enough, doesn't it? But of course, that's not the real story. Because the brutal truth is simply this, that the living standards of millions of low and medium paid public service workers are being hammered in the name of reducing the deficit. And as the cuts begin to scythe through our public services, more and more jobs are under threat. Only yesterday, the Office of Budget Responsibility forecast over 700,000 jobs are to be slashed from all of our vital public services. And as the pay freeze bites, while inflation rolls ahead, Real wage cuts are making it ever harder to make ends meet. And with the high-handed Chancellor unilaterally now announcing yesterday two more years of real terms pay cuts even after the pay freeze is over. And with an assault to be mounted to on national <coughs> bargaining arrangements, threatening to make the most hard-hit regions even more impoverished. And then on top of that, they're coming for your pensions. And meanwhile, those who caused the crisis, well, they're getting off scot-free. This is a government that scrapped the tax on banking <coughs> bonuses. Instead, they're asking you and millions of other public service workers to pay higher contributions, not to go into your pension, but simply to pay off the deficit. In other words, they scrapped the banker's bonus tax and replaced it with a teacher's tax, a nurse's tax, a dinner lady's tax, a lollipop lady's tax. And they got the meat, they got the nerve. the nerve to peddle the lie that we're all in this together. <laughs> what insulting claptrap. So today, let's nail the lies that are peddled about public service pensions. One, they're not gold-plated. Half of public service pensions in payment today are less than £5,600 a year. In local government, half of pensioners get less than £3,000. Two, they're not unsustainable or unaffordable. Big changes were expected only five years ago to reduce the cost. And as Lord Hutton's report has shown, the cost as a share of our national wealth is actually set to fall 
over coming decades not to increase. And three, there's no justification either for the higher contributions demanded by the Chancellor. If you need to raise extra money, what about introducing a Robin Hood tax on the bankers? What about given out every year in pensions tax relief for the richest 1% of the population. Now some commentators and cynical politicians try to divide public service workers from private sector workers. Well we shouldn't be divided and we won't be divided. Our battle in the trade union movement is for decent pensions for everyone. And if this attack on public service pensions succeeds, we know that won't help people in the private sector one iota. Because in a race to the bottom, we all finish up losers. So let me finish. Let me finish by saying this. I want to settle this dispute through negotiations so that we can avoid further industrial action. But that needs the government to come to the table prepared to negotiate genuinely and fairly. And isn't it rich to hear ministers criticising us for today's action and saying that negotiations are the way to resolve these issues. Did they negotiate before they announced entirely unilaterally the change in pensions indexation from RPI to CPI, reducing the value of your pension at a stroke by 15%? No, they didn't. Did they negotiate? No! They negotiate before George Osborne announced entirely unilaterally contribution increases of over 3%. No, they didn't. And did they negotiate before they announced entirely unilaterally the two-year pay freeze and only yesterday two further years of real terms pay cuts to come? No, they didn't. So now they say they want to resolve this without further industrial action. And further meetings are planned for the coming weeks. Well, I hope they approach those talks with a real willingness to move. Because that's the only way this is going to be resolved. So, be proud of the action you have taken today. You've made a stand an important stand. You're showing the heart, the courage, the determination to win a decent settlement and pensions justice. That's the message that's coming through loud and clear in every part of our country today. Nothing less will do. Thanks for coming. Keep up the